bless you so much. We give you all the glory and honor for all that you have done for us. According to your word in the book of Amos, you told us in the last days there will be famine. You said a famine not of bread nor of the test of water, but it's a famine of your word. And when we look in that area, Lord, we can boldly say in this ministry, as young as we are, that, Lord, this has not happened to us, and it will not happen to us. Amen. You have been so faithful that, Lord, every time we gather together, we fellowship together, there is always bread, there is always water to quench our thirst. Amen. And, Lord, you have done it throughout this very conference since yesterday. Words of faith, words of transformation, words of breakthrough, words of renewal, words of commitment. And here we are tonight once again. We pray that, Lord, it will not be an exception. But, Lord, you will give us words of triumph in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I'm looking upon to you that by your grace and your mercy, oh, we have known you to be a kind God, a compassionate God, a loving God. And so we are expecting that you will look on us tonight with the eyes of compassion, with the eyes of kindness, with the eyes of care, to the extent that, Lord, Father, you will change the game tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. We know you to be a game changer. We know you to be a destiny changer. We know you to be a shame remover tonight where troubles, challenges, difficulties have brought shame to the point that many, oh, people even recognize them by pointing fingers at them. I pray tonight as a shame remover, you remove that shame. Amen. You make a triumph over every point of, every, every act of shame in Jesus' name. Lord, I look up unto you. The Father, let the enemy who has been lying upon us with a lot of troubles, a lot of challenges, a lot of, oh God, adversities, I pray tonight, change that game. Amen. Let the name of God end this very year, 2023, triumphantly. As yeah. we enter 2024, oh, we will be triumphant people in Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. The chance of this, we're backing on you, we are counting on you, looking up unto you, that you will help us. Yeah. We pray that the spirit, the anointing, that bug, that ministration, oh, pray now, let it affect us even as we go through this message. Exactly. Let us make us people of prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, as we continue, continue with us. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord, brethren, for tonight. And I believe that, like the title even tells us, triumphing over troubles. That tonight, Oh, we are coming out triumphantly in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, we are looking at this message, which you can find from your booklet, page number 60, 16. You will find it on page number 16. Triumphing over troubles. Triumphing over troubles. You know, when you look at the book of Job, turn your Bibles with me to the book of Job, chapter 14, as I look at verses 1 and 2. Job chapter 14, verses 1 and 2. Man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of troubles. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. Ah, praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. What a great encouragement. It's a man that is born of a woman. And we are not born by angels. We are born by 
woman. We are born by flesh and blood. And here Job was saying, he said, look, that we are full days. But then he says, it's full of troubles, full of troubles, full of challenges, full of adversities, you know, full of obstacles, hindrances, and thanks be to God, thanks be to God, thanks be to God, who causes us to triumph always in Christ Jesus. With all the midst of all the troubles, in the midst of all the challenges, I can assure you through the word of God that the Lord who have been causing us to triumph, he will cause us to triumph this time as well in Jesus' name. Amen. No matter what the troubles, no matter what the challenges, no matter what the obstacles you might be going through, there is an assurance from that word of God. Oh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, you know, verse 14. Is he who causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus? And like the choir told us, if we can pray in the name of Jesus, we can pray in the name of which we will do, and we will triumph in that name in Jesus' name. Amen. As we look, troubles are part and parcel of human existence. We cannot live long enough in this world without encountering troubles. It is not possible. You can't live so much. You say, ah, I don't want to face any trouble. No, you can't live like that. Your, your time on this earth will not be long. It will not be long. It will not be long. It's just like when you look at even, you know, the, 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 the nature in which we are, we are living, even the world, you can't live, you know, without even sun. That you are going to say, ah, I'm going to live without sun. Yes, I'm going to be on that ship. My brother, it will destroy your life. You will lack vitamin D. And the moment you lack vitamin D, that's how sicknesses will lower over you. You will not be able to resist. Nothing inside you to resist any sickness, you know, that is wanting to enter your body. And it's like that. Life is made up of positive and negative. It's made up of up and down. That is how life is. You can't choose. If you choose only one and you live under one, it will crush you down. And, you know, troubles are very, very important. You know, hindrances, adversity, they are important. I remember it was Warren Wesby, you know, that minister, that author who said, he said, the bombs are what we climb on. The bombs, the troubles, the difficulties, they are the things that we climb on. They are the things that brethren we climb on. They are the things that make us to get to where we ought to get to. They are the things that make us to be matured. They are the, the things that make us to be able to stand. And that's why no matter how troubles, you know, even though it's, it's not palatable, sometimes let me tell you that they are good. Praying that troubles do not come is a waste of time. By praying and depending upon God to deliver us from troubles when they come is the part of the scripture, you know, is the part of the scriptural wisdom. It's, it's, it's very important. It's very important. And never waste your time praying that you should not get into trouble. Never waste your time praying that one. No, it will never work. It will not happen. You know, look at Isaiah. Look at what God said. God has never promises, oh, trouble free. Never. It is not going to happen. Isaiah chapter 43, as I look at verses 1 and 2. Isaiah 43, verses 1 and 2. But now, thus saith the Lord, that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art my, Amen. my brother. Amen. Just hear God. God says, you are his. Sister, God says, you are his. And Amen. He, is Amen. he says that, look, you, you, you are his property. You are his property. He owns you. And that's why he's telling you, he said, don't be afraid. I, the one who redeemed you. I'm the one, yes, who called you by your name. Look Amen. at verse two. He said, when you pass through the water, 
He didn't say you will not pass through the water. Oh, you and I know some of the situations we pass is through, some of the conditions, sometimes challenges that come to us, it's like we are in the middle of the water, as if we don't know how to swim. The more effort we are making to get out of the water is the more it looks as if we are, we, we are, we are drowning. Sometimes we get into some situations, it's, it's burning, it's burning. We don't see the flame, you don't see, it, but the challenges sometimes is in the home, in the family, sometimes it's in our finances, and sometimes it's so much bad as, but God says, sure, listen, you will pass all through this, you will get into it, but assurance is that it will not rekindle its flame against you. It will not bend you. That water, no. it will not do what overflow you. But for God to tell you that you will not get into the water, it's a lie. For God telling you that, no, you will not get into fire, he's deceiving you. He has never made mention of that. And if anybody assure you, anybody promises you that, my brother, that person is deceiving you. It, that one is not from God. He said, when you pass through the water, I will be with thee. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame rekindle upon thee. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is the assurance of God. And we know that we, 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 used to, we used to say in the world, you know, that our problems which are recognized, they are already half solved have solved. And so when we recognize that troubles are part of life, but then let me tell you, troubles are there to come to us. Oh, but we need to learn also one of the greatest of life's wisdom is good preparation for challenges, is good preparation for troubles when they come, so that the troubles do not leave us bitter or battered, but leave us in a better way. Praise the name of the Lord. And tonight, there are some things we need to know about troubles. That is all this message about. There is uh, some things we need to know about these troubles. And we know how also to handle them. That is what constitute, or let me say, that is what form the content of this message. How to handle, how to, I mean, to know some things about these troubles. And number two, how to handle them. This is all about this message. And I pray that the things you would learn from this message, you will take it to heart in Jesus' name. That Amen. God will give you wisdom. That you will not throw what you are going to learn overboard. You will not say, no, this one is not that you just throw it somewhere. No, learn, get some wisdom about it. Know about troubles so that it will not come upon you unaware, unprepared. But then also how to handle them when it comes. And I pray the Lord will see us through in Jesus' name. So with that, we are going to look at the message under this subheading, travel in groups. Troubles, they travel in groups. Let me tell you, trouble traumatizes, it traumatizes the gullible. You know, those who are easily persuaded. When trouble comes, my brother, it brings them down. You know, and not only that, we will talk about the temperate for greatness the model for greatness, you know, we're temperate for greatness. Tr troubles, they are temperate for greatness. And then triumph through grace. When trouble comes, my brother, we will triumph. By the Amen. grace of God, we will triumph. Amen. Through his grace, I'm telling you, we will Amen. triumph. Because it is he, God, who make us as to triumph always, 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 not sometime, always. In the night, you will triumph. In your mm -hmm. dreams, you will triumph. In the daytime, you will triumph. The mm -hmm. arrow that has been shot in the afternoon, the new day, you will triumph over them mightily in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Praise the name of the Lord. So let us not waste time as you look at the first point. And one thing you need to know about trouble, like I said, is that they, tra they travel in groups. That is the first point. They travel in groups. You know, troubles don't travel alone or singly. 
Never. They don't do that. They travel in groups, in convoy. They travel in tandem. They as a team that they move together. And you will definitely you will see it. You know, it, that is the way trouble comes. That is the way trouble happens. And we are learning all this thing so that you will know. You so that you will not be saying, ah, why is my own like this? It's always me. As I'm getting out from this one, this one is happening. As I'm getting one from this one, this one is entering in. My brother, it's not you alone. That is the characteristics of trouble. This is one of the characteristics of trouble. They, they, they travel together. They move together. And that is the way they are. You know, when consider the following scenarios of a few people so that you understand what I'm talking about. You know, the troubles, they travel in groups. Look at it. He said, Mrs. A, all these troubles happen at the same time. Which were the troubles? Number one, she has been diagnosed for breast cancer. This was a woman, Mrs. A. As she went to the hospital and she was diagnosed with breast cancer, it didn't stop there. By the time she got home, oh, she got some news that her, her teenage daughter has gotten pregnant. <laughs> you understand? Here you are, you are from the hospital. By the time you got home, news came from the school from the evidence that are, uh, you need to come and take this your daughter because we are found there to be having another stomach, you know, and that is it. And, and not only that, by the time it will not keep long, the first son, even in the university also, has done what has failed and has been told to withdraw. So you look at this woman's life, Mrs. A, and there is a health trouble. You look at this woman's heart, there is a family trouble. You look at this woman's like there is an academical trouble concerning the child. But you not, it doesn't stop there. Look at Mrs. B as well. Mr. B also, all these troubles happen at the same time. Number one, his wife has just filed for a divorce. This is something this man was not expecting. Yes, he knows that things are not going on well in the family. But he is not expecting this thing all at all. No, no. And the thing devastated this man. It devastated this man. And not only that, as he was just thinking, seeing how he's going to do, he has just lost also his recreative job. The job that is even sustaining. Ah, that is going to bring another what business problem. And look at it. Look at it, wife is, has filed for divorce. Here you are, the job also at least, which will give you some comfort and every other thing. Yes, you have lost that lucrative job as well. Not only that, as he's just thinking about all this one, the bank is also about to repossess even the, his own house. They want to take it over. They want to take it over. Why? Because mortgage has not been able to be paid. And they want to take it over. Or maybe it's like he has gone into bankruptcy because of losing that recreative uh, job. And he has gone into bankruptcy. So they are going to take it over. And as he's thinking of all this one, he has been diagnosed also for colon cancer. Think about it. Oh, marital problem, business problem. Oh, tr financial trouble, health trouble. And you look at all this, and that is how, that is how. And if these troubles, you know, come one at a time, if even these troubles, they come one at a time, do you know that? And they are space apart. Almost everybody can even handle them and be triumphed through it. You can be triumphed over this thing if they come. You know, he uh, coming one, one at a time, he coming space, you know, in between. But here you are, it's like within one week, these problems just come upon you, my brother, my sister. And this is where the unfortunate thing happens. But unfortunately, troubles, they travel in convoy, they come in this group. That's how trouble comes. 
my brother, I believe you are learning something from trouble. I believe you are learning something from challenges and problems. You know, maybe I can hear somebody saying, ah, Pastor, it's like I don't understand what, what, what you are trying to say, my brother. What do you mean, Pastor? What are you even talking about? Trouble, they travel together, they move together, they do this. My brother, my sister, what I mean is that every time, you know, they, every time the enemy will bring one problem the other. And when he's bringing it, you know, he doesn't give you breathing space. He doesn't bring you, he doesn't wait you to solve one problem before he brings another. No, it brings all of them together. Oh, you said no, it's like I don't understand. Let me show you something. Do you know this sports, boxing? Boxing. When boxers are fighting, you know, they are in the ring and they are just playing that game, beating themselves like that. When an opponent give one blow, you know, he give one blow and then you see that, ah, the blow he has given to that opponent. You know, it's like it has this, this his adversary. What happened? Does he stop there for the man to recover? Does he does so? He doesn't do so. In fact, the first time he throw the blow and he see that it has hit the man and it has made that half impact upon the man. Ah, it's like he get more strength he to, to, to lash on him, more blows, lash on him more that is the way the devil does. That is the way trouble comes. When one trouble comes, it seems that I see that you are this off. It's like the thing has affected you so much. Then you begin to bring him more. You begin to bring him more. You begin to bring him more. That is what they does. And if you don't even understand this one also, my brother, let us begin to consider the classic scriptural example of Job so that you understand. You will see the life of Job, you understand. For a look at it, the trouble came one after the other in a quick succession. Look at the book of Job, Job chapter one, Job chapter one. And I believe with this one, you understand what we are talking about. The trouble, it travels together. And that you need is a hard time. My brother, you understand this. So that when trouble begins to come, when trouble is coming in succession, my brother, you will, not be, you will not get into despair. You will not get into despair. You will not get discouraged and begin to talk like many people talk. It's me only. It's like they are the only people in this world who faces trouble. No, you are not the only one. It happens to everyone of us. Look at Job chapter one, Job chapter one, and I'm looking from verse 14, Job chapter 1, verse 14, and says, And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing, and the asses feeding beside them. And what happened? And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servant with the edge of the sword. And I only, I am escaped alone to tell thee. You see here, the Sabians invaded, the, I mean, the, and they, they took away the oxen and the asses, or as well as even they killed the tending servants who were taking care of those men, with the exception of only one who came back, who came back to tell his master. But look, as he was just talking about that case, and as he had just finished narrating what has happened, that look, your wealth is almost going that this is what the Sabians have come to do. Look at verse 16, what happened. And while he was here speaking, there came also another and said, the fire of God is falling from heaven and has burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. I only, I am escaped alone to tell thee. What do we see there? Satanic fire here which today we will call natural disaster. Oh, mm. satanic fire. Today we will call it natural disaster. He said, the satanic fire here, mistakenly called the fire of God, fell and burnt even the sheep and all, oh, I mean, all the tending servants except only one. 
But as if that one is not enough, look at verse 17, verse 17. While he was yet speaking, while he was yet speaking, while he was yet speaking, what happened? There came also another and said, the Chaldeans made out the three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servant with the edge of the sword. And I only, I am escaped alone to tell thee. That is another one. You see, a succession. They didn't give Job breathing space for Job to think, what am I even going to do? For Job to think, ah, I need to protect the other ones over there. But the Bible says, while one is finishing, another one will come. Look at verse 18, verse 18. Verse 18 says, and while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy son and thy daughter were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And what happened? And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness. A great wind from the wilderness caused Job's house even to collapse. Caused Job's house to collapse. Another natural disaster. Another natural disaster. That's the way we will call it today. And the last one, look at what happened, verse 19. He says, and behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. Is it only the house? Oh, look on, look on. And it fell on the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Children, all of them has gone. But look at it. The point I'm bringing up from this very place, look at the, the, I mean, how fast the whole thing was. As he was, Job was, is like recovering, wanting to, I mean, to, 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 to value what, is, what actually happened to the animals. What actually happened? You know, how did they able to make? How did the fire came down? The Bible says that another one was coming. As he's talking, another one is coming. As he's talking, another one is coming. Not the quick succession of this happiness, happening. And that there is this one word which mark out in verse 16, verse 17, verse 18. He says that while he was yet speaking, there came another also. There came also another to come and give his own version of the trouble that the enemy has called, of the disaster, the trouble which has happened to you. Brethren, when you consider all the scriptural examples that demonstrate these same principles, one thing, one thing, and we need to learn it to heart. And so that when it comes upon you, you remember what I said from the beginning of the message, we are to learn. We are to learn. We want to learn. We want to have knowledge about this thing. How these troubles happen, the characteristics of this trouble, so that we will be able to apply wisdom, you know, how to handle it. And if you consider even on the scripture, on the, I mean, some, some scriptural examples, there, there are some also which demonstrate the same principle. You look at Apostle Paul, Look at Apostle Paul, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Turn your Bibles with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Let's look at also Apostle Paul, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And I'm reading from verse 23, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 23. He says, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors more abundantly, in stripes above measure, in prison more frequent, in death often. He said, of the Jews five times received I 40 stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rod. Once I was stoned, and thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day, I have been in the deep. In journeys, often. He said, in perils of water, oh, in dangers of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, 
in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in dangers even in the sea, and dangers even among false prophets, in weariness and painfulness and watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of the care of all the churches, who is weak and I'm not weak, who is offended and I'm not. If I must, I, I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmities. The God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed for forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. In Damascus, the governor under Aretas, the king kept the city of the uh, Damascenes with the uh, garrison, desirous to apprehend me. And through a window in the basket was I let down by the wall and escaped even his, I mean, this, his, his hands. Here Paul was narrating, you see the troubles he was talking about, troubles that he passed through. Troubles that he passed through. Some were human, you know, and some were forces, some were powers. And in all these things, natural disaster that he went through, and every other thing like that. And Paul here was just narrating his own, you know, deception from the false brethren, persecution from even the Judaizers, disappointment and betrayal from the lies of people like, you know, like, like demons who even loved the world and abandoned Paul, you know, to the work of God. Fierce within and fierce without. Paul faced all these troubles. He faced all these troubles. My brother, what are you passing through? My sister, what are you going through? Oh, I pray that from today, like many of us, we used to say, it's only me, it's only me, it's only me. It's as if God doesn't know anybody that God, I mean, God doesn't allow, uh, I mean, has targeted you alone. No, 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 my brother, that is part of life. Remember what we said, part of life, is part of life, is part of life. But I believe that the Lord God, Tonight, you'll be triumph in Jesus' name. Amen. You'll be Amen. triumphant in Jesus' name. Amen. You look at even Nehemiah. Nehemiah had opposition from Sambalat and Tobiah. Nehemiah had oppression from within even the community. Nehemiah had lack of cooperation even from the leaders like the princess of Tekoa that refused even to wear. He faced trouble. He faced trouble. Can we talk about Isaac? Oh, Isaac, Isaac, the Philistines fought him in Genesis chapter 26. Oh, to the point, they fought him of his inheritance. They threw him away. Places that he dig, he dug. Those wells that he dug. The moment he dug this well, they will come and take it. He will go and dig another one. By the time you finish digging it, the Bible says that the people will come and take possession of it. They did it, they did it until 26. Oh, the Bible said for that one, they didn't come to, the, I mean, strive with him again. He called that place Rehoboam. Rehoboam. The Lord has made room and we will prosper. We will be blessed. And tonight, I'm telling you, you are triumphing in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord has made room for you. No matter what the trouble, no matter what the struggling, no matter what, my brother, the fight you are going through, for some from the family, some from the working place, some from even your neighbors, my brother, you will triumph in Jesus' name. Amen. Weariness, weariness from constant... Amen. And rivalries, I mean, the, 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 the enemy took over his new wells. The enemy sent him even packing. You know, they were thinking that, ah, this ground, this ground, there is something special to this ground that we, 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 we regret of giving you this ground. And so the Bible said that they will come and take it. Why? Because it was a period of famine. It was a period of famine. Isaac, I, I, Isaac wanted to move to Egypt. God said, you stay over here and I will be with you. I will bless you. And he obeyed God. He obeyed God. My prayer is that in time of trouble, you will not be disobedient in Jesus' name. 
that in time of trouble, you will not take things into your own hand to rule, to order your step. No. The Bible said the steps of a good man, they are ordered by God. It is not a man, you know, to make his own way, to order his own step, to pave his own uh, way. No. To depend upon God. Isaac did it. And he paid. No matter what the troubles he was facing, as much as he was in the will of God, trouble was coming one after the other, one after the other. I believe by that time, maybe he will be thinking, ah, did I make a mistake? He didn't make a mistake. He stayed there. And at the end of the day, the Bible says that, oh, he was able to say, Rehoboth. God has made room for me, and I'm going to be blessed. I'm going to prosper, and I pray we will prosper. What about Amen. Jacob? Amen. What about Jacob? What about Jacob? Look at, at, at the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 47. Oh, I love this story. Genesis chapter 47. Genesis 47, as I read verse 8 and 9. Genesis, Genesis 47. As I'm reading verse 8 and 9, open your Bible, let us read it together. A very wonderful passage. Genesis 47, 8 and 9. Here was Jacob, Israel. Oh, he have heard that God, uh, uh, his son, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Joseph is alive. And Joseph sent some wagons that they should go and bring him. And the Bible said they went, they brought him. When they brought him, he needs to go and then, I mean, present him to the Pharaoh. And by the time he went, he took his father to Pharaoh. Pharaoh looked at Jacob and he asked him one question. Look at verse 8. He said, Pharaoh said unto Jacob, How old art thou? How old art thou? And Jacob said unto Pharaoh, The days of the years of my pilgrimage are 130 years. 130 years. But look at the clarification there. He said, few and evil have the days of the years of my life been. 130. But Jacob here was saying, oh, it, it, they are few. But one thing in particular, he said that they are full of troubles. Evil has marked this 130 years. Why? Because you will find that there was hostility from the neighbors due to the wicked activities of his son, you know, of some of his son, Simeon, and then Levi. When the people of Shechem, one of the, the prince over there, has raped even their, their sister, and they deceive the people in that place, we will give our sister to you to marry if only you can circumcise but they have some conspiracy. They had a conspiracy, evil mind, you know, bad mind. And the Bible says that by the time these people, I mean, circumcised, that is how they were deterred. They were sore and they lashed on them. Two of them, they destroyed all the male people over there. And Jacob was saying, what? How have you done? You make the people over here. I was thinking even before them. Not only that one, weariness even from the constant infighting of rivalries of the wives. Two wives, two cucumbers. Two wives, two cucumbers. And how, what do you think? Living together? Oh, there were a constant infighting. Pain from Reuben's defiling even Jacob's bed. Rachel, his loved wife. You know, that was the wife he, he, he loved. He loved that wife so much, he was ready to do everything. He had to serve 14 years for that woman, for that woman. And the Bible says that it was not long also that that woman died even in labor. Jacob's testimony of his life. That's why he said, he said, few and evil is the evidence of all these 130 years. Brethren, when you look at all this, what do you learn? That's why I'm telling you, troubles after trouble, trouble after trouble. So next time trouble is facing you, next time trouble is confronting you, next time my brother challenges, oh, faces you like that, and it's coming, and it's coming, and it's coming, my brother, oh, remember what we have learned tonight. They travel in what? 
in a group. They travel in a group, but no, it matters not. They can travel in a group. They can do everything. But one thing is sure, God, God will cause us to triumph gloriously, always over them when they come. Let them come in hundred. Let them come in their, I mean, in their thousands. One thing is sure, our God will cause us to triumph always gloriously through our Lord Jesus. And that will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Point number two. Point number two, the trauma, uh, traumatize the gullible. Traumatize the gullible. Look at trouble traumatizes the gullible. Look at Proverbs chapter 22. The book of Proverbs chapter 22. And I'm looking at verse 3. Proverbs 22, as I look at verse 3. The book of Proverbs 22, looking at verse 3. It says, a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. The simple pass on and they are punished. They are punished. They are punished. And what are we learning from here? That the wise, the prudent, they always have the foresight. That's why, my brother, like what we have learned so far, oh, you should know. You should know some things, and it should begin to help you to have a foresight. Do you know foresight to anticipate oncoming troubles and you mark out a strategy for a victory? The Lord will grant us this victory in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. You know, the gullible are unprepared. You know, the people, the gullible, they are unprepared. Those who are easily, I mean, are, 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 are to change, they are unprepared and they are wiped out by the sudden disaster. Look at it like we read. They are they are they are mean. They are wiped out by this sudden disaster. But number one, one thing we'll learn: troubles overwhelm the unprepared by their numbers. So you should learn. You should learn. You know, people who are unprepared. When trouble comes, people who are not expecting trouble, people who don't know the nature and the characteristics of trouble, what trouble can do. You know, when it comes upon them, like we have learned so far, what happened, it overwhelms them. But the wise are able to do what? To leap even over the wall. Look at Psalm 18, Psalm 18, as I read verse 29. Psalm 18, and I'm looking at verse 29. Psalm 18, verse 29. For by thee and tonight, true God, we will triumph gloriously. He said, for by thee, I have run through a troop, and I, by my God, I have leaped over a wall, every wall of limitation, every wall of limitation, every wall of limitation. You will leap over troops, and yeah, when right. they set up some limitation for you, you can't pass here, you can't overgo this boundary. No, this is how you are going to belong. Let it be. Is it by forces? Is it by demons? Is it by dominion? Is it by those spirits, the witches and wizards? Oh, by our God, we will leap over those walls. We will get over every, every limitation in Jesus' name. Amen. One thing you need to know, troubles cause the weak also. Number two, trouble cause the weak to faint even in the day of adversity. And Proverbs chapter 24 tells us, he said, when you faint in the day of what adversity, okay. it means your strength is what? It's small. It's small. It's small. It's small. But I'm praying that as we are learning all this thing, the day of trouble, the day of challenges, the day of problems, my brother, you will be up and quick to face those troubles. You will triumph over them in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, Amen. number three, see, you say troubles cause many to despair of life and they give up. And many, many, and I'm talking about many. Do you think how many, why do people, I mean, backslide? Why do many people turn their back on the Lord? Many people, when troubles come, why do they turn their back on the Lord? Why do you think there are some people even, oh, who does what? Who even commit suicide? Who commit suicide? 
Why do you think so? Don't you see what Job's wife told him? You saw what Job's wife told him? He said, what? Are you still going to keep living in this integrity, in this holy, 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 holy serving this God? He said, no. But with all these problems, we have lost our, we have lost our properties. We have lost the business. We have lost our houses. We have lost even our children. Then what is still yet for us to live? He said, why don't you curse God and die? Curse God and die. Curse God and die. Curse God and die. And that's what many people, they do. They get into despair. They commit suicide. People don't have hope. But then what we are saying is that troubles cause many to do that. I pray that your moon will not be like that. But the mm -hmm. more the trouble comes, the more the trouble will push you to serve God. The more mm -hmm. the trouble you will hold on to him. Like Job said, he said that though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. I pray that will be your own testimony in Jesus' name. He said, mm -hmm. I know my Redeemer liveth, and you will trust him the more. The more the trouble is coming one by one, coming is coming one by one from the health, from your I mean, family, marital problem, is it financial problem? Is it the, I mean, business trouble? The more he's coming, the more you hold on to God, the more you will trust in him. And you will be able to say like Job, he said, though you slay me with all these troubles, yet will I trust in thee? Because I have no other way. I have no other place to go. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. But my prayer is none of us will be like that. Look at Jeremiah, even Jeremiah. Jeremiah, look at what Jeremiah did. Jeremiah chapter 20. Jeremiah chapter 20. Brennan, we are learning something, something that people of all they didn't know. Something that people of all they didn't know. Look at Jeremiah chapter 20. The book of Jeremiah chapter 20, and I'm reading from verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 7. He said, oh, Lord. This was Jeremiah complaining, complaining. He said, oh, Lord, that has deceived me. And I was deceived. How can God deceive you? No, it's the devil who deceived. It's the devil. God is not a deceiver. It's the devil whose name is a deceiver. He said, oh, Lord, thou has deceived me. And I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I. And as prevailed, I am in derision daily. Everyone mocked me. For one, since I spake, I called, I cried out. I called, I cried violence and spoil because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and derision daily. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor even speak any more in, the, in, in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire, shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. You saw Jeremiah, Jeremiah of all people, Jeremiah of all people, Jeremiah of all people, and somebody that when he was in the womb of his mother, God set him aside. And God have told him, he said, when you were there, I know you. I set you aside. I prepared you to come and to do this thing. He heard all this thing from his father. And here, look at when trouble came. He was even blackmailing that father. You are a deceiver and you have deceived me. And it is not possible. I pray the Lord will help us. We will not be gullible in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, when trouble comes, my brother, we will, it will not lead us to that point in Jesus' name. As we look at the third point, the third point, template for greatness. Template for greatness. Look at Job chapter 23. Job chapter 23. And I'm looking at verse 10. The book of Job chapter 23, looking at verse 10. Job 23, I'm looking at verse 10. Turn your Bible and let's see. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. My brother, when trouble comes, when trouble comes, when trouble comes, if you will be able to stand, my brother, you will come out like the gold. You will come out like the gold. Look at James chapter 1, James chapter 1, verse 12. The book of James chapter 1, and I'm looking at verse 12. James chapter 1, as I consider verse 12. 
He says, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. From when he is tried, shall he shall receive the crown of life. One trouble. It's trouble that will push you there. It's the problems, trials that comes your way. It, it looks uncomfortable. By the time you come out, he said that you will receive the crown of life. With the Lord has promised to them that love him. Mm -hmm. And like I told you, you know, Warren Wesby will tell you the bombs are what you climb on. You climb on to your what your victory. You climb on those troubles, those difficulties. They are the things you climb on to your success. They are the things you climb on to your prosperity. My brother, troubles are temperate. They are model for greatness. They are model for greatness. Challenges provide a platform for accomplishment. And that's why greatness is in proportion to the nature and the number of problems we have solved. Greatness is in proportion to the nature and the number of problems we have solved. Why are some people, my brother, they are they, they are they, they, they are they are crowned more than other people? Because, for example, many professors have published hundreds of research, you know, papers, but like John Nash, he wrote five groundbreaking research papers and was crowned a world-renowned scholar. The question is, why? And it's because the nature of the problems he solved was significant. They were very, very significant. Troubles reveal the depth of our wisdom. Trouble reveals the height of our, our knowledge, brethren. And it's very, very important. You have troubles, you have problems, you have challenges, distresses, and every other thing. But you are, you know, many people, you, you, you have all these problems, challenges and everything, but you are skipping, you know, because of trouble. You, you, you are skipping Bible study. You are skipping the revival hour. Even the, the leadership master plan, you are a leader. But troubles, because of those, you are skipping, you know, that is not wise. That is not wisdom. That is not wisdom. And like we are talking, you know, troubles are the things that make us to see how wise we are. It makes us to know the depth of our wisdom. And when you find people who have troubles, when you find people who have problems here and there, and where the word of God is that can bring liberty, they are not there. Brethren, then it shows you how shallow their knowledge, the, the, the knowledge that they have. How unwise that they are, even those people. But if, if trouble didn't come, you won't know. But trouble will make you to know. Don't you know the Bible says he sent his word and that word healed them. As you are hearing the word, it will get you out from that trouble. As you are hearing that word, that is how you are going to move out from the decision. And but you find people who will stay there, who will not even come to services. Why? Because it's like I have this challenge. Why? Because it's a life, I have this problem. But look at the book of Luke. Look, look at the book of Luke. One wise woman, one wise woman, Luke chapter 13. Look at what one wise woman did. And sometimes I look at a lot of our brethren, especially people who have challenges, especially people who have difficulties. You know, they have problems. You know, they exchange, you know, the, the, the solution with another thing. They exchange it to another thing. Look at the book of Luke, Luke chapter 13, and I'm reading verse 11. Luke chapter 13, verse 11. Let me read from verse 10. He says, and he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. He was in church. This was Jesus preaching on that Sabbath day. And you guess who was there? Guess who was there? Verse 11. He said, and behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of what? Infirmity. 18 years. And was what? Bowed together. And could in no wise even lift up herself. She was bowed together. She can't even walk. She is bowed together. She can't even straighten herself even to walk. You find people who have troubles, they can walk. They still have trouble. They can, I mean, they can sit down. They have people who have trouble. They can, I mean, they run and every other thing. 
and they miss, they miss. But look at this woman. The Bible said with the type of trouble, you could have had the, I mean, reasonable excuse to stay at home. But this woman, the Bible says he did what? He was found in, in the church. He, guess who was there? This woman was there. And the Bible said, and when Jesus saw her, verse 12, he called her to him and said, woman, he said unto her, woman, thou art loose from thy infirmity. What am I bringing out? You can see the wisdom. What is the sense of me staying at home when I have a problem? When the healer, when the miracle and the game changer is at some place, when the shame remover is at some place that I can go there, the destiny changer, when I can come, go there, can't you even remember the woman with the issue of blood? Can't we see the wisdom? Even she saw with all, with all, with all the hindrances, with all the challenges in that woman's life, because as somebody who is having issue of blood, she is not supposed to go among people. She's not supposed to be in the midst of people. Oh, I pray that the Lord God Almighty, he will help us in Jesus' name. But like Amen. we are saying, Greatness is in proportion of the nature and the number of problems we have solved. When troubles come, troubles reveal the depth of our wisdom. Trouble re reveals the height of our knowledge, the width of even our strength, the breadth even of our experience and the reach of our tenacity. Many people, many people, many people. And here you'll find, that's why like I told you, Proverbs said, if you fail in the day of adversity, your strength is small. And many people, we look at them matured. We look at them grown up. We look at them, they know the word of God here. But it's when trouble comes, problems come, maybe there you will know their height, the height of, of, their, of their heart, the, the width of their strength. You will know the breadth even of the experience they say they have. Some of them said they are born again, sanctified, and every other thing. But it is there we will know. And as we look at all this, I pray that God himself will help us. You know, every Tom, Dick, and Harry possesses some measure of common sense. However, when in, in, an individual possesses common sense in an uncommon measure, he is classified as what? As wise. Wow. As wise. Wow. Sometimes we look at some people, we say, wow, ha, this is very wise woman. This is a wise man. Ha, does it mean that we don't have also wisdom? We have. We also have women. But then when somebody have it in an uncommon measure, you know, is there, you say, this one is wise. Nobel laureate. You know, they, they, in science have solved difficult and unusual problems. You remember Moses. Moses is classified as great because he brought what an impressive servitude of oppressive servitude of year of 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 the year of years to an end. If you look at Nehemiah, Nehemiah is even classified as a great person. Why? Because he rebuilt the broken walls that was viewed as being impossible to build in record time. But did it come so easy? No, it is there you will find this one. This one is a different person. This one, temperate for greatness. Temperate, trouble was marked out for what? For greatness. It was trouble. It was trouble. When you look at Nehemiah chapter 2, look, for example, Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 19. The book of Nehemiah chapter 2, look at verse 19. Nehemiah chapter 2, and I'm looking at Verse 19, the book of Nehemiah, chapter 2, considering verse 19, it says, and, But when Sambalat, the Horonite, and Tobiah, the servant, and the Ammonite, and Geshem, the Arabian, heard it, they laughed us to scorn and despised us and said, What is this thing that he do? Will he rebel against the king? You saw over here, they ridicule them. They make fun of them. They make jest of them. They even threaten them. They even threaten them. 
These were troubles, problems. That's how, with all these things, at the end of the day, by the time he has finished the work, how would you classify him as great? How would you classify him? You sound like we are saying, you know, troubles, they are temperate for greatness. Jesus is classified as great because he ended Satan's reign over mankind and brought internal redemption. He went through. Did it come so easy? On that cross, on that cross, John chapter 19, verse 30, he said, it is finished. No, it was trouble. He ended it up. He ended it up over there. Apostle Paul is classified as great because he confronted the powers that be and won. He fought with beasts at Ephesus. He emerged victorious and he established the gospel even in Satan infested territories. Joseph became great by the hurdles he scaled through. Brethren, I'm praying that the Lord Almighty, he will help us that troubles will make us great. Troubles will make us successful. Trouble will make us people, oh yes, of God, mightily serving God in Jesus' name. Praise mm -hmm. the name of the Lord. But mm -hmm. brethren, the sister, you can also confront powers as well. If Paul confronted powers, you can confront powers. Oh, you can speak to the trouble. Oh, my brother, you can speak to that trouble. Like that centurion said, he said, speak the word only. You can also do that. You can also do that. My sister, you can do that. My brother, you can do that. You can open your mouth and speak to that mountain. Move from thence and be cast into the sea and it will be done. Oh, didn't you see what Elijah did? For three and a half years, yes, he prayed, there was no rain. Another three, after three and a half years, he prayed, there was a mighty rain. But in all this, what I'm going is, the Bible says, God spoke about it. He said, he's a man, like passion like you and I. Like passion like you and I. He was subjected to what? To troubles like we have, to fear. He ran away. He picked the race. When Jezebel even spoke to, to, to her, warned her that this is what I'm going he, she, he ran away. He ran away. And God is saying, he's a woman being like you and I. If he prayed for that the rain should not come for three and a half years, and he prayed again, rain came. He said, we can do it. We can do it. We can do it. My brother, we will do it in Jesus' name. Amen. How then do we even triumph? With all that we are talking, remember the message. Triumph, triumph, triumph over what? Troubles. Triumph over troubles. How then do we triumph? As we look at the last point, triumph through grace. Triumph through grace. And triumph through grace. What are you going through, my brother? What are you going through, my sister? And what is even going through you, my brother, my sister? What is going through you? Look at the book of Psalms, the book of Romans, Romans chapter 8, the book of Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, the book of Romans chapter 8, as I look from verse 35, Romans chapter 8 from verse 35, Romans 8 verse 35, he said, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution is a part of the what? This is the catalog of troubles. He says, shall persecution or even famine or nakedness or peril or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are persecuted, we, we, we are counted as what a sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things. In all these things, we are what? More than conquerors. Through him that loved us. Praise the name of the Lord. My brother, in the midst of the things you are going through, in the midst of the troubles that is going through you and everything, one thing I can show you, you are a child of God, you are more than a conqueror. You Amen. are a child of God, you are more than a conqueror. You Amen. are a servant of God, you are more than a conqueror. Amen. And no trouble, no problem should be able to bring you down in Jesus' name. Amen. And the Lord himself will do tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, and all the sword. Nay, 
In all these things, we are more than conquerors. No matter the trouble, oh, my brother, no matter the challenges, the problems that may be confronting you, we are passing through. Oh, my brother, God's assuring voice is that. God's assuring voice is coming through to us. My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in what? In weakness. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why you told Paul. That's why you told Paul. That's why you told Paul. When Paul was crying, when Paul was praying, and on this particular problem, the Bible says, Christ, three times Paul prayed, pleaded with him. He said, Lord, take this thing away from me. Take this thing. I don't love this thing in, the, in my life. Take this trouble, this problem away from me. But God told him, he said, no, 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 no. My grace, let this one be there. But that grace is sufficient for thee. Praise the name of the Lord. And sometimes that is all that we need. The trouble will not move, but the grace for you to take over that trouble, for the grace for you to, my brother, to manage that trouble, the grace for you to succumb that trouble, my brother, it will be there for you. There's, my strength is made perfect in weakness. It is those times you will see, you will see, you will see. And God himself will do it for you, my brother. He will perfect it in your life in Jesus' name, you know. Mm -hmm. Let us not be like this. Let us let us not be like the psalmist. You know, let us not be like psalmist. When you read Psalm seventy three, Psalm seventy three. Let me show you some few things over there. Let us not be like, like that one, Psalm seventy three, and I'm, Psalm seventy three. Let's see some few passages over there, Psalm seventy three, and I'm reading verse from verse one. He said, "Truly, truly, truly, God is good to Israel." even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, as for me, look at this harvest. As for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. He said, look, as for me, I almost backslid. I backslid. I, I even slipped up. Why? He said, for I was envious at the foolish. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked, he was going through problems, he was going through challenges, and he was looking at the wicked. He was looking at the sinner, that this one is like, things are different for this person. That things are good for that person. Look at what he said in verse, two, verse, verse five. He said, they are not, the sinner, the wicked, they are not in trouble as other men. <laughs> Look at him. And he looked at all those ones and he was envious about the sinner. He said, neither are they even plucked like other men. Therefore, pride compassed even them about as a chain. Vowless even covered them as a garment. Look at verse, verse, verse 11, verse 11. And they say, how does God know? When they are doing wicked, when the sinner, the wicked are planning evil and they are doing wicked, they even say, they say, how does even God know? And is there even knowledge in the most high? They'll be asking that question. Verse 12 says, behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. And when you look at all that, you and I, we can see, we look at some of our neighbors, we look at some of the people around us, and they are sitting in their cars and they are doing, and we know that they don't go to Bible study like we go to Bible study. They don't fast like we fast. They don't even pray. They even know God to call upon the name of the Lord. No, they don't do all this one and every other thing. And the man said that, but yet they prosper. They prosper in the thing they do. They even increase in riches. Verse 13, look at where the psalmist said, he said, Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain. I wash my hands in what? In innocence. 
look at what this Sammy was saying. He said, look, ah, that can you can you look at what he said, look, I'm even regretting. I'm regretting of who? Of serving the Lord. I'm regretting of following the Lord, of being even a, a child of God. This was a Christian. This was how the summit was saying. He said that, look, verily, I've cleansed my heart in vain. All this holiness I've been keeping is in vain. He said that I have even washed my hands, this integrity that I'm living in. I've been done it for in vain. And that is what, you know, normally happens to some believers. And by the time, like the psalmist said from the beginning, he said, I almost slipped. I backslided. And many people, they go on even to backslide because of trouble, because of challenges, because of the problems. But like Paul said, when he went through all this thing, he said, God told him, no, leave it there. My grace is sufficient for thee. And later on, he himself accepted it. He said, yes, even I even now like to be in my infirmity because in my weakness, I see the power of God moving. In my weakness, I see the goodness of the Lord upon my life. Brethren, I pray God will help us. Our troubles may be many, but there is a divine assistant to overcome and secure the victory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The good part of the thing. Our troubles may be many. Our troubles may be a lot. Look at it in Psalm 37. He said, Many. Look at Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Psalm 37. As I read verse 17 and 18. Psalm 37. Look at Psalm, 30, Psalm 34. Sorry. Psalm 34. I'm reading verse. 17 and 19. Look at what he says, Psalm 34, verse 17. He said, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their what? trouble. Oh, wow. Telling you, it's not only one trouble. He said, All, all, all. Many are the troubles, brethren. Many, even though troubles may be many. Verse 19 says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Oh, oh. Praise the name of the Lord. There is the secure we can overcome. Divine assistance is there. Let's read some of these few passages because they are very, very encouraging. Look at Psalm 50, Psalm 50, and I'm looking at verse 15. Psalm 50, as I look at verse 15, they say, and call upon me in the day of trouble. And I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. You see, oh, my brother, God knows troubles are part of life. He can't take that trouble away from us. We can't live trouble-free life. But one thing he can assure us, in time of trouble, don't get into despair. Don't be like that summit that you almost slipped away. No, let it not happen to you. Don't say that, oh, God, I deceived you. They say that, ah, there is peace in Jesus. They say, if I give my life to the Lord, all things will be well. And I gave my life to the Lord. Look at the problem upon problem. Look at the trouble upon trouble. My brother, have you forgotten that you have left the kingdom of God? And the moment you left the kingdom of God, you will sign into the army of the Lord. You are at enmity with the evil one. You are enmity with your former Lord. You are enmity with your former master. The ones who kingdom you were living in, he will fight you wanting to bring you back. And he will create troubles for you. He will create the problems for you. But the Bible says that in the day of trouble, call upon me. Call upon me. Call upon me. Trouble in your finances, call upon him. Trouble in your marital life, call upon him. Trouble in your health, call upon him. Trouble in your social life, call upon him. In your business, is it in your academical life? Call upon him. He said, I will do what? I will, I, I will deliver thee so that you will glorify me. Look at Psalm 118 verse 5. Psalm 118 verse 5. Psalm 118 and I'm looking at verse 5. Psalm 118 looking at verse 5. I call upon the Lord in distress. Oh, I call upon the Lord in trouble. 
I call upon the Lord in problem, in challenges. And the Lord did what? Delivered the being. The Lord will do it for you. He will answer you. He has answered me and he set me in a large place. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise Amen. the name of the Lord. And lastly, Amen. lastly, let's look at Psalm 108. Psalm 108. Psalm 108. Already the choir has given us, you know, a message already. In the name of Jesus, he said, we, we pray in that name. Oh, it will be well for us. Psalm 108, Psalm 108, and I'm looking at verse 12 and 13. Psalm 108, verse 12 and 13. He said, give us help from trouble. For vain is the help of man. True God, true God, true God, true God, true God. Not through me, not through your pastor, not through any prophet, not through any babalawo. True God, true God, true God, true God. What did he say? He said that for, for true God, we shall do what? Valiantly. Okay. My brother, you will triumph. True God, tonight you will triumph. True God, mm -hmm. tonight you will triumph. For he mm -hmm. it is that shall tread down our enemies. Enemy. The enemy, enemy within, the enemy without. Those babala were here and there, creating problems here and there. My brother, oh, true God, we shall, we shall, we shall tread down upon them. Through him, we shall do valiantly. This is what the Lord is telling. It's true prayer, true grace, triumph through grace, triumph through grace, triumph through grace. And tonight is the night. Pray. Tonight is the night. You need to pray. Tonight is the night. Like the choir prayers, we must pray. Pray in that name. And by the time you pray in that name, triumph, triumph will be your portion. You will be a triumphant woman. You will be a triumphant brother in the name of Jesus. Why not begin to open your mouth to thank God to pray the name of the living God? Why not begin to magnify the name of the Lord? My brother, begin to magnify the Lord, begin to praise his name, begin to exalt him, begin to give him, begin to Thank him, thank him for tonight. Tonight is a night of triumph. Tonight is a night of triumph. Tonight is a night of triumph. And you must pray, you must thank the Lord, you must magnify the Lord, you must exalt the Lord. My brother, we pray. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Give us a few minutes to thank the Lord. Give us a few minutes to thank my brother. A problem of knowledge. A problem of knowledge is already it will make you to begin to do this. Oh, my brother, pray you will be remembered. Instead of you praying, you will be murmuring. And you will say the whole book of it. So thank God for the knowledge. Thank God for the truth. Thank God for the truth. Thank God for the truth. And my brother, we begin to pray at this moment. In the name of Jesus, we begin to pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, we begin to pray. We begin to thank God. We begin to magnify the Lord. We begin to exalt His name. We begin to lift the Lord and honor Him. We begin to adore Him because He's a great and wonderful one. Because He's going to do Him, do Him. We are going into, I mean, way. Through him, through him, we are going to do very young tonight. Through him, oh, my God, I call upon the Lord, call upon the Lord, call upon the Lord. Through God, through God, through God, through God, in the name of Jesus, we will do everything. So we are going to pray in the name of Jesus. Whatever troubles, whatever troubles you are passing through, whatever troubles you are passing through. You must triumph over him. You must triumph over him. You must triumph over him. And that Lord will do to pray. 
always, 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 always. And today we must do that. Today is the day of triumph. Today is the day of triumph. My brother, triumph, 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 triumph. Triumph over every infirmity. Triumph, my brother, over every evil. Triumph over every disappointment. Triumph over every discouragement. Triumph, my brother.
My brother, your prayers will move them. The word. My brother, who moves the world? Who moves the world? Who has the world under his control? Your prayer, my brother, can move them. Oh, who has the world under his control? Who has every activity, every situation under his control? And tonight, as you call upon him, and tonight, as you pray in his name, tonight, as you depend upon him, my brother, you are triumphant. Triumphant, triumphant, in the name of Jesus,
Psalm 18, verse 19 says, He brought me forth also into a large place and delivered me because he delighted in me. My brother, my sister, God delights in you. Mm. And as a result of that, you are going to open your Amen. mouth and tell the Lord, bring me forth into a life. Bring me forth into a triumphant place. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord lastly. Talk the to the Lord. The Lord will The Lord is healing somebody on this platform. You know, yesterday, there was somebody on this platform. And God is single you out this evening to heal you. As our <laughs> pastor yesterday night prayed for people who were sick, there was this individual person. At that point, you were sitting down, but you stood up and you knelt down. That is the person I'm speaking to. You knelt down. You prayed. You were crying. And God, 
this problem, take it away. God heal me. God heal me. You were crying. You were on your knees. You were crying. The Lord is healing you tonight. The Lord is touching you tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, the great that I am, our great high God, Amen. Healer. Amen. Lord, Amen. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. I believe it will be as I have been told. Amen. That the healing of this individual is settled. Amen. Lord, take glory for it. Amen. Lord, take honor for it. Amen. I pray that the blood that you shed on the cross. Father, will sweep everything away from the body of this individual. Amen. Lord, I decree healing Amen. right now for this Amen. individual in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Your spirit of infirmity, enough is enough. Amen. I command you, I declare to you, get out Amen. from that body in the name of Jesus. Amen. By that powerful name, I say, get out in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I thank you for this healing. I bless your great name for this healing. I thank you so much for what you have done. There is an individual here. There is a word for you. You had a problem with your in-law, your mother-in-law. Is it your father? You had a problem with your in-law. And you are looking at this person as a bad person. The Lord wants me to tell you the problem is not from them. Yes, this in-law has offended you. This in-law has asked for forgiveness, but you are still holding that thing against this in-law. And that is your problem. That is your problem. The Lord is saying, let it go. The person has asked for forgiveness, let it go. Else it will destroy your life. Lord, I thank and I bless you. I pray the Lord, the grace for this person to take that action. Lord, I pray you will do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There is somebody here also, you are sick. You have been asked to do x-ray. In fact, you are suffering from your chest. But you don't want to do that x-ray because you are afraid the way the pain is, maybe it's going to be a bad result, heart problem. There is a word for you. Go to your pastor. Let your pastor pray for you. After that, go and do that test. Let's see what the problem is. Is there any problem? We will know how to pray. But I'm believing God that as your pastor even pray for you, the result is going to be negative. Mm -hmm. The result is going to be negative. Because you can't stay under this ministration, this evening praying, and you remain the same. No, you are triumph already. You have triumph. Let your pastor pray for you. It is done. No more trouble. It is done. I want to pray for some people here, as many who have exams to do. You have medical exams to do. Medical exams to do. Yes, you have got appointment, everything to do, whatever medical exams you have to do. I'm going to pray for you. The Lord is going to touch you. Whatever results, it will come out to become negative. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, the Most High God, the one who told us, I am the Lord that he led thee. The one who said nothing is too difficult for him. The one who declared that nothing is too hard for him. The reason is you are the God of all flesh. You created Amen. us. You formed us. If anything goes wrong in this body, you are the best person to know. Not even the machines. Not even those equipments over there. We thank Amen. God for technology. But you who created us, you know the best. Lord, I pray I hand over these people into your hand. Amen. I am so king of all glory that, Lord, you make them to triumph. Amen. Triumph Amen. over these infirmities. Amen. Triumph over these challenges. Amen. I pray, Amen. Lord, you will do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You said I will decree a thing and it will be established. Amen. I decree tonight they are healed. Amen. I decree tonight they are healed. Amen. They are healed. Amen. Let the zeal of the Lord of hosts perform this healing. Amen. Amen. Can I bless Amen. your name? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There is somebody also you have stomach problem. You are almost the way the thing is making you, you are thinking is an ulcer. Lord, I take authority over this infirmity. I bind this strong man, creating this trouble, creating this pain. And I declare right now that every demon assigned to this pain, Lord, I command that demon, lose your activities. Amen. I frustrate your work in this body. Amen. From tonight, I come against you by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Lord, I ask that you transfuse the blood of Jesus into the body of this individual to Amen. neutralize Amen. every awkward and negative thing in that stomach. Amen. Let the zeal of the Lord of hosts perform it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 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 Let us begin to thank and bless the name of the Lord. Thank the Lord and bless him. Give God the glory. Church, lift up your voice and thank the Lord. Bless 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 the Lord. Let all that we give you bless and praise his name. Magnify the name of God. The great things he has done. The wonderful thing he has done. Oh, praise the name of the living God. Praise the name of the living God. Praise the name of the living God for tonight. For the answered prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Father, Lord God, we thank you for tonight. We bless your great name. We give you all the glory and honor. Lord of a truth, you are a compassionate, loving, and caring Father. We thank you, King of Kings for causing us to triumph. Mm -hmm. You have been doing it, but tonight's own, oh God, is with a difference. Mm -hmm. And we want to say glory and honor be unto your name in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank you so much thank you. for making your children to triumph in their entrepreneurial life, troubles, challenges, some in their spiritual life, those who are finding it difficult even to leave this Christian journey, I believe from tonight, by the authority in the name of Jesus, oh God, we have triumphed. We have mm -hmm. tread down upon these troubles. And mm -hmm. Lord, we are walking triumphantly into 2024 in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Lord, I'm praying and looking up unto you that Amen. Lord, any other thing, oh God, as your servant, I declare tonight 
that your people they have triumphed in Jesus' name. Amen. I declare Amen. it is done in Jesus' name. Amen. Where there are challenges in people's spiritual life, challenges in children's academical life, challenges in social life, challenges even in our business, our job life. King of glory, I pray, let there be an end. Tonight, Amen. I pray, let it be settled in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I pray for families going through turbulence. And I'm asking that peace be still in that family. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, settle it in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I pray for this individual who is afraid. Already, he has been warned. It's like contract is getting to an end and he's afraid that, Lord, there is not going to be renewed. Lord, I'm praying you are a game changer. Yes. I pray that, Lord, you will change the game. Amen. I pray, Lord, you will make him to triumph. He will get his contract renewed. Lord, let it be settled in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray also, Lord, for that individual being tormented by fear, 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 always fear. Oh Lord, I command that spirit. Oh Lord, I declare to that spirit, get out in Jesus' name. Amen. And I replace it by the spirit of boldness and of sound mind, Amen. as you declared Amen. unto us. Lord, let it be done in this individual's life in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, that spirit, oh God, of gloominess, gloominess, always, this individual is so gloom, you know, always like de depressed. Oh Lord, I pray, exchange it with the garment of, 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 of joy, the garment of praise. Lord, may it come upon this individual in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I thank and I bless you. I give you great praise. I give you honor and thanksgiving for what you have done. Yes. To you be all that duration. Yes. But I am looking up unto you that tomorrow, O oh, King of all glory, it will be the climax. You will bless us. You will make the blessing to overflow. You will make us, oh God, to have a breakthrough, the triumphant, oh God, by the faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Let be unto your name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.